so, we have come to this point, the final full year of content creating, and due to only being two months into 2022, I'm going to lump that into this video too. However you see this finale, along with the upcoming goodbye stream, just so you know, I am wordless by the amount of love and support that you have given me over the years. 2021 has been the most involved that I have been with my community, from our regular videos covering a visual novel or an RPG Maker game, to our live streams covering a randomly selected game that we have covered in the past, the interactions that we have had along with all of the love that you have given me. Truly thank you. Looking at all of the comments made within the previous year's memories, I have such a loving community filled with passionate wonderful people that have an interest in RPG Maker games, visual novels, an interest with the content creator themselves, or a multitude of aspects or all of them. No line, no phrase or even a single word could be put forward on how much warmth each comment has given me over the past one to two weeks, with people's own memories of when they discovered me, when they discovered RPG Maker Games, why people stuck around with me, perhaps even post-retirement, people stick around for anything that may crop up in the future. We have the remakes of Eve, Forest of Drizzly Rain, and Midnight Train somewhere down the line, and regardless of when they drop, I'll be sure to cover them. I want the channel to be finalized with playing a game that I hold dear, an adventure to fully close the portion of when I'm active on the channel. If you are on Discord and you see my profile name, you would notice a fraction by it, a number alongside another number, both separated by a dash. Well, if you ever wondered what this is, it is in relation to a video that I'm currently making, and as time goes on, that progress would increase. It will be a mammoth of a video, which will be the true closure of my time on the channel. But for right now, the three mentioned remakes alongside the mammoth video will be the final ones planned post-retirement. Without further ado, let us embark on this final tale of memories with Thea Blist. The games we have covered throughout the year along with what is the fall of my content creating motivation. Some of this will be dark, so buckle up as we are about to go on a roller coaster. Like 2020, there have been many tales played throughout the year with many highs along with many lows. To me personally, my crowning achievement throughout the year and perhaps the entirety of the channel is being the first in the English language to have completed Purgatory 2 Demonic Mode and uploaded the successful run onto YouTube. Passing DO33 while preventing the gigantic demonic worm from devouring us was an indescribable moment in the fourth and final phase of the mode. Yes, it only takes five minutes to complete the mode, but it's the doing part that is the hard part. And after a lot of hours of practicing, failing, blaming half tiles and buttons that do not work at times, that one successful run made all of the failed runs worth it. Funny thing really, that a year ago on the 25th of February that I completed Purgatory Demonic Mode, far enough to the completion of Purgatory 2 with the biggest spike for growth that the channel has ever seen, to now on the brink of retirement. I wish there were other games with such a magnitude in the same field of Arbitrary Mega Games or similar engines that would give the channel a huge growth like Purgatory 2 did. Perhaps the remakes may do that, but who knows, maybe a certain manly channel would leech all of the community's attention on YouTube with no charge of small content creators to shine. It really was the highest point on the channel covering Purgatory 2, both creatively and growth-wise. It really felt that I was doing something that was both passionate and the content creation yielding results that I've always wanted. Other games came close like Angels of Death, Missile Definitive Edition with all, the All Deaths video, but other games I had the passion to content create, but I never got the newfound love of gaining new subscribers with each video. This newfound love though for wanting more subscribers rather than just passion with content creating 
is a curse. One that has slowly consumed me and my love for content creating, as it has sapped out the passion that I have for content creating without the success of a lot of views, a lot of likes, more subscribers, etc. I wanted success. I wanted more from my creations, and this has not been anywhere more than apparent than in 2021 and 2022. And I am at the very least angry at myself for falling this far down, but at the very most incredibly distraught and depressed for climbing down to a pit of darkness where there's no light at the bottom. And in November when I had my hiatus, that pit truly felt empty, devoid of motivation, life, and alongside that, devoid of purpose. Without that success post video, I felt like the video itself has no purpose, no contribution towards anything. I felt that all of the time and effort put into the videos had been in vain. I felt that no one would enjoy them, despite being the same formula that I've always performed, but on a different title. I hated that feeling, and most of all I hated myself, and I still do. I hate myself for becoming like this, this being that I never was when I first joined YouTube. Though for me, the catalyst towards becoming this way will be a topic later on in the video. For now though, let us recap of the games that we have played throughout 2021. Ranging from incredibly long, story-filled adventures like Omori, a lot of farming and battling within the world of sincere deceit, the hilarious and charismatic tale of being a death dating TV show of find love or die trying, and who could forget my first time playing Katara Sojo, the timeless classical visual novel that inspired so many other projects to start in the first place. The adventure with a heartbreaking bad end within the Venus of Improbable Dreams with the words, I still believe in you, resonating. The sweet yet dark tale of graveyard girls that ended sweetly in our run. The crazy academy that came to life in Anne. The endless number of bad endings in Bad End Theatre. These, alongside many other tales, really made 2021 a wonderful year. A year filled with many emotions throughout the entirety of each of these stories. Some laughs, some rages, some tears, a lot of happy times. All in all, I have not regretted playing any of these games at all, even if I don't complete them due to an illogical puzzle and or riddle. I have never gone into a game with any expectations beforehand. I dive in with an open mind for the embrace of the game's universe and story, and I adapt myself to that world, the lore behind the game, as much as I humanly can. I only get answers for what I see, what I feel, and what I could get stuck on. In 2021, there have been more games of highly cryptic puzzles than there has ever been before. Many games along the way I had to abandon due to the puzzles and or riddles themselves being incredibly difficult, with no hints to guide the player in the right direction, a process of pressing enter on every tile possible mindset just to advance to the next portion of the game and repeat the process of interacting with every tile. The pursuing of the solution to some of the puzzles are not worth it in comparison to the quality of the game's story. If a game's story captures you to a point where no matter what kind of puzzles lay in your path, you will want to find the solution to solve that puzzle to witness more of the game's story. Even in that frustration though, I still had fun. I still enjoyed my time playing through a portion of the game that I managed to progress through and progress to. Now though, we are at the point in the video where we discuss what is the fall of Flare Blitzed. Why are we at this point of the channel where I'm retiring from YouTube? Why I'm fed up of YouTube? Regardless of the reasoning, I still love RPG Maker games, visual novels, etc. But I'm just not going to upload at the very most and come back here and there at the very least. So let us dive deeper. Thinking about the journey that we have had together, throughout the past two years since the start of this pandemic, I can pinpoint three main causes towards the channel's demise of growth. The first one, and this is the single biggest factor of the three, is YouTube's algorithm. 
the single most luck, external factored element within the success of a channel and its growth is whether or not you appear in the algorithm. If you don't, then your channel is not going to grow. For the past 7 years, there has been only very minuscule moments where my videos have done well, like with the Purgatory 2 series, Fine Love or Die Trying series, the Midnight Train series. Aside from these, YouTube just has not favoured the content I produce out at all. And I hate that. I hate how luck is something that dictates the success of a channel, and deep down, YouTube knows that its algorithm is catered towards channels that are large, that are a business. Any channel that gives YouTube the most amount of revenue for their presumably big pockets already is the thing that they are always pursuing. Why help the little guy who will generate us 50 pence at the most when we could put a channel on our algorithm that generates us a huge amount of money? You could say that a small channel has to become big in the first place, but that was within a land before the time when YouTube changed its algorithm where you could put in a huge amount of work into your videos, captivate the right audience for the channel regardless of your channel's size to allow you to increase your subscriber count for your hard work. Hard work that took many, many hours, along with a lot of love from your audience. Nowadays though, YouTube and its algorithm is built on the basis of how much money you have invested into your channel. How much money have you spent on a promotional team to promote your channel out there? How much money have you spent on artificial means of gaining subscribers through bots and manipulating the subscriber count over people organically clicking on the subscriber count through their own conscious free will decision? YouTube's algorithm is like a tombola drum, with billions of tickets in them and a channel is selected at random to be put onto the YouTube algorithm. However, to make small content creators be as small as possible, large content creators get a thousand times more tickets than a small content creator. The tickets that the larger content creators are allocated to are a hundred times larger. And to wrap up how unfair YouTube is, they forgot to put the tickets allocated to the small content creators in a bonfire. That is one way of describing the YouTube algorithm and the main reason why I'm no longer doing daily, weekly, if not even monthly videos. YouTube just does not have the capacity to understand or acknowledge that small content creators will always remain small because YouTube has no interest in making their algorithm be filled with passion, only filled with channels with a tick on them. Verify channels. These next two reasons are similar towards one another. One of them is more for existing subscribers and why most of them are not watching my videos and the other is specific towards RPG Maker games and why certain titles have next to no attention to them. So let's start with the former. Most of the time, a video of mine has between 1-5% to views in comparison to the subscriber count of the channel which you could probably work out mathematically, it's not a lot of views on a lot of videos. 6.7k subscribers means that between 67 and 335 videos are accumulated per video and on a channel of this size is really poor. One of the main factors about this, and this is something that I've mentioned in the 2020 video, are VTubers. There is only so much watch time available on the internet, on YouTube, Twitch, etc and VTubers have sapped away a lot of potential views that the channel is getting. And this is not just me, but every other small content creator that is not a VTuber will notice a similar thing since the beginning of the pandemic. The pandemic was something that escalated a lot of channels to start up and become VTubers. Go to any VTuber's Twitter profile and or YouTube channel and you'll see that almost all of them have a starting year beginning with 2, 0, 2 with either 0, 1 or 2 after them or whichever number if you're watching this in the future which is physical evidence in itself that they have gone out of control in numbers, popularity and their ability to sap away a lot of potential growth of channels that existed before them. Like I said in the previous video, 
I do not get why VTubers are so popular. Their personality are a front and appear as fake. Their love for their fanbase is a facade to what they truly are. Their voice is high pitched enough to break your eardrums, shatter glass, along with your headset as well as suffering from verbal diarrhea. The differences between VTubers and non-VTubers are astounding. All VTubers fall from the same tree. A tree full of apples that consists of nothing but sexual innuendos, fake personalities, fake voice automatons, as they most likely have a voice changer, over-the-top cringy commentary that makes listening to insects buzzing near your ear 24-7 a viable option, a fan base that has a religious oath and pact to protect their deity overlord no matter what they do. They could appear right in front of you in real life as a digitalized person like from a futuristic sci-fi film, shoot all of your loved ones dead, take all of your personal possession and property, and you would still love them. People say that VTubers have talent. I say point to me where. People say that VTubers are also real people. I acknowledge that. But why act like a cringy anime troped character that has raccoon ears, teeth from a shark, purple skin that makes you look ill, and have as much voice variety as a fan blowing? And speaking of blowing, why do people view YouTubers who are blowing off an imaginary exhaust pipe as something that is talented, entertaining, worth your money to donate to them, or at the very least worth your time? Why do people love, worship, and simp for these automatons, like if they are a matter of life or death? VTubers can announce that they are holding a sacrilegious event where fans have to offer themselves up to be sacrificed so that the VTuber that they love so much that they can continue to exist on the internet, and I guarantee you with 1% certainty that people would go to these sacrilegious events to be sacrificed. You might imagine by now that I am being harsh at the very least, and heinous at the very most, and insulting VTubers. But let me say this, what differs between a VTuber and a non-VTuber, and why are VTubers much more successful? If the only difference between the two types of content creators are their appearance, then that is self-evidence in itself, in the kind of fan base between the two kinds of creators, making VTubers all exterior no interior, all fake with no genuineness. If you are a person who becomes a VTuber to conceal your identity, who actually wants to overcome your social anxiety and build a fan base of genuine fans that like you for you and not your digitalized you, then all I have said does not apply to you at all. But for the vast majority of VTubers, all that I have said applies. They use social anxiety as an anchor of petty points from their fans. They use their lack of being able to be identified as a means to perform the unthinkable on the internet and get away with it for both identification difficulties and their hardcore simp fans defending them. They are essentially unaccountable for anything bad and their fans would do anything to defend them. All in all, the YouTubers have sapped potential views, likes, comments, and subscribers from both my channel and other channels. If COVID-19 never happened, then there would be far less of these automatons. But I guess an alternate world where VTubers don't exist is too far of a dream to be real. Perhaps a lot of people aren't worth saving from the rabbit hole of all exterior, no interior VTubers. If you wonder why I keep saying all exterior, no interior, look at their chat and the answer should be self-explanatory. That is the second reason for why I'm done with YouTube. The rise of VTubers are vile and they are intellectually undermining everyone's IQ to a level below the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. I guarantee that one day, VTubers will monopolize not just YouTube, but the entire internet. And no one sees that other than me. The third and final reason is another pandemic related thing that has happened is the dramatic rise of subscribers on a channel named Manly Badass Hero. And this is something that is certain to be in relation to the first reason of being done with YouTube's being YouTube algorithm. Throughout the pandemic, 
YouTube has changed their algorithm to tailor towards those who are large along with businesses and YouTube decided throughout the pandemic to promote particular channels that cater in a particular genre across all genres on their platform from gaming to gardening to cooking etc. YouTube has picked a channel to be the flagship channel for representative of a particular genre of content and for arbitrary maker games, anime games, visual novels, indie games, horror games etc. YouTube has personally picked Manly Badass Hero as that flagship channel. In the first 10 or so years of Manny's existence on YouTube, he has gained nearly 200,000 subscribers. Between 2020 and the beginning of 2022, he reached a million. What else other than the pandemic and YouTube's shift in his algorithm could explain Manny's quintupled size increase in subscriber count? His video quality has barely changed over the years. The games that he plays are consistent in style. Like, what else could it be other than the pandemic that has turned his channel from an under 200,000 channel to a 1 million channel and is dramatically climbing as we speak? I have nothing against Manly at all, but when seeing a channel like his succeed and not seeing any other channels including my own have the same kind of luck when it comes to growth and attention, you can't help but feel that YouTube's actions against small content creators are undermining their ability to grow and nothing other than intentional. At the end of the day with YouTube, it's whatever profits them the most that garners what channels can grow the most. Whatever YouTube sees as a successful channel will be a successful channel and I am so fed up at this point. I took a break in November 2021 due to being absolutely burnt out from a lack of progress, including a near no subscriber gain on a day to day basis, sometimes losing subscribers daily and on multiple days in a row. The support given by people whenever I'm going through a rough time has been an absolute blessing. I'm sure you have your own hardships on a day to day basis that you encounter and giving some of your time to watch my videos, liking the video, commenting on it despite how difficult times can be, I'm touched by that. Not touched by the fact that your day might be rough, but because I can be a getaway from the day to day troubles that we all encounter in our own ways. We all come from different backgrounds, different walks in life, perhaps a neighbour of yours you don't get along with and on that particular day, they did something that really hurt you. But that does not keep you down because you know that behind your computer screen might contain a new video from your favourite content creator waiting for you to watch it. All of the times I hear about when people are waiting the next video on the same game that I've just uploaded, all of the different comments that people have put up that have been incredibly uplifting for both me and for others to read it, you, all of you, have been an inspiration to me and the fuel for me to kept on going, just as much as I've been able to provide some satisfaction from a hard day's work or a hard day's studying. At this venture though, it is time to wrap up these videos. There have been many trials and tribulations along our six year journey, with only the most difficult obstacles being ones that have appeared because of COVID-19. My ultimatum of all of this hardship through at the end is that the fall of the channel is all down to me. I am the one who failed to adapt to YouTube's algorithm changes. For one who failed to see VTubers under a light in which I can accept. For one who failed due to comparing themselves to a much bigger channel. I am the one at fault. And I do not blame you for not liking me as much. Especially after my rant again about VTubers. I can only hope that at some point down the line. The popularity of VTubers will decrease. YouTube's algorithm is sorted so that both small and large content creators can thrive. Unfortunately, deep down, I know that these problems will only worsen as time transpires. But a man can dream, and that is what we all hold on to for a better tomorrow. The fulfillment of our dream. Perhaps in the future I will return, when there are more popular games to play like the Eve remake. 
but I know that Manly will sap the entire community's attention to his channel, so there's no point in making content. But at least I know that I will have fun in those last few video series, knowing that I tried, like a hand sticking out of the ground hoping that someone will grab it and pull me out of the lands of the dead. Thank you for watching, and look after yourselves. I dream of the simpler times to return to YouTube, where there was less drama on the platform, where YouTube was still a platform that cared for all of its creators. I dream of a world where war does not exist, no parties were happening by governments behind closed doors and lying to the entire public to cover their backs. The horrors that are happening right now within the Ukraine and the animosity that Russia is polluting, looking to divide the United Nations and the countries that are part of it. The violation of human rights in China continue to run rampant, with false propaganda always betraying both China and Russia as ones of the right, with the rest of the world being wrong. As long as there are different ideals, there will always be war. As long as nations don't see eye to eye, there will always be tension. But we can always discuss without nuclear weaponry, men with guns, and an ambition to invade and destroy the way of life to fulfill an ideology that has been vanquished away a century ago. There will always be good and bad on all sides. I highly doubt that the majority of the population wants a war. Only the elite few that run the country get to decide on the course of history. I want the world to look at itself and decide the best course of action through words, not through guns or knives, and translate those words into action. Just like with YouTube, I want it as a platform to improve, and it was at one point in the past, a platform that has peaked when it comes to content creation diversity, where growth is something that happens organically rather than artificially. But a man can dream. A man can dream. A man can dream.